All right. Good morning, Park Hill Christian Church. How's everybody doing this morning? Good morning. Good morning. This is apparently a popular vacation Sunday it is. for a lot of families. I know my entire family is. <laughs> Allison's here. Everybody say hi to Allison. Hey, She'll Allison. be here for about 30 minutes <laughs> at least. If you would, please stand and sing. We're, we may be few, but we will sing loud, right? <clears throat>
Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everyone. We're, we're, we're putting that whenever there are two or more gathered, there is love to, to uh, attest here. It is good for to see you this morning in the house of God. Just a few announcements. Uh, if you haven't smelled it yet, um, we hope you will stay for our fellowship dinner. And that's the reason I'm going to say we're light this morning is because there's a dinner today <laughs> and everyone's going to come to the 11 o'clock service. We're going to hold our breath and pray that, okay? Um, your gift to help end world hunger with the uh, Heifer Project International uh, can take place this Christmas through our church. Um, there is a tree that is in the hallway right through that door in the children's wing where you can um, get an envelope and you can give it to a person that you would like to honor. And you place your donation in an envelope provided and then put it in the offering box. Also, there's an outreach mission tree here in the back uh, to remember or honor loved ones. And the proceeds will go to two worthy causes, the Pack Shack that we will be doing coming in 2020 and also the van. $5 will allow you to um, purchase an ornament in honor or in memory of someone. And those will be also be posted in the bulletin um, at, the, at that time around Christmas. And then um, this Saturday, the All You Can Eat Pancake Feast will be going on, uh, sponsored by our Disciples Men. That will be from 8 to 11, so we hope you come to that. And then Sunday, December 29th, please note there will be one worship service in the sanctuary at 11. And there will be in here at 9.30 a continental breakfast for all of us to enjoy. So... Lots going on, and there's a lot more in your bulletin, so find a bulletin and take it with you so you'll know everything that's going on. Now we got some Christian action time. First, I'd like for Jan Diedrich to come up, and then Susan Hampton. Good morning. Uh, I'm Jan Diedrich, and I would like to ask that you help us to uh, bring canned goods for our canned good drive. We have a 500 can goal, and we're going to make it. Uh, there is a company that uh, will sponsor that, and they will double the number of can goods. So if we get 500, and we will, then we will have 500 more. Thank you. You put your can goods in the, the bags in the different areas or in the children's library or in the little kitchen. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to try to get through this without crying. For those of you who don't know, there is a member of our congregation that is about to leave for boot camp. Danny, could you please join me up here? Over the past week, I went to a recruiting station and got a military-issued Bible with Danny's name engraved on it. And we want to know, we want all of you to, or all of us want you to know that we're going to be praying for you. We're proud of you. And thank you for protecting our country. And at this time, we're going to continue in worship. By faith, we see the hand of God in the light of creation's grand design, in the lives of those who prove his faithfulness, who walk by faith. Yeah. 
gospel shall prevail. For we know in Christ all things are possible. For all who call the this big old Bible has been brought out of our life. But this morning, this big Bible comes for some big worship that we share together this morning as we gather around this table. And I read from the 34th Psalm, the 34th Psalm for a setup. To come to his table. And it says this. I will bless the Lord. At all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and be glad. Oh magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. And it's that third verse. Oh magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. What are you doing as you come to the table to magnify the Lord and exalt his name? How is it that you bring your heart? How is it that you bring your mind? How is it that you bring your whole self? That's what we will do when we come to the tables and share in communion. Before we do that, we will share in the lighting of our Anvit candles so that all of our candles will be lit. Please join me in the responsive litany. Love is more than a flicker within the human heart. Lord, Lord reveal Lord, your love Lord, and make us new. In a hurried wor world with little time for others, Advent calls us to remember that love is patient. In a world where often we become consumed by our own intents, Advent <coughs> interests, I mean, Advent calls us to remember that love is kind. In a world where often we are quick to anger and slow to forgive, Advent calls us to remember that love is not easily angered and through love we come to forgive. This Advent <clears throat> lets us behold the love of God embodied in our Savior's birth. God is love. Whoever loves in love lives in God and God in them. This morning we light three candles. The first candle reminds us of, of the marvelous hope revealed through the Savior's birth. In a time of despair, God shattered the darkness with the hope of a new future. The second candle reminds us of the peace that only Christ can instill in the human heart. In a world that abounds with hostility, Christ is, alone is the one who speaks. Peace be still. The third candle helps us remember that God's perfect love made flesh 
can fill our hearts, ignite our souls, and change our lives. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, as we continue our Advent journey, we pray that being rooted and established in love, we may have the power to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and how deep is the love in Christ. True love was not only born at Christmas, but revealed for all to see. May we come to know this love in our lives and share it with those around us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. With the candles of hope, peace, and love lit, with the candles on our communion table lit, with the light of the world being here among us, we come and we share communion, and we will do this in remembrance of him. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you today for the blessing of salvation that was brought to us through Jesus the Christ. We're grateful for the grace which Christ has given us as well as the Holy Spirit living in each of us. We praise you, God, for calling us hearers and being our God. And thank you for this time of worship in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. In Christ's name, amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed in that upper room, about halfway through the meal, he took bread, thing on the table, turned the common into uncommon. He gave thanks, and he said, This is my body given for you. Take, eat, and remember me. At the end of the meal, he took the cup, and again he gave thanks. He took the common once again and made it uncommon. He made it holy. He took that cup and he said, 
This cup is my blood shed for the remission of sin. This is the cup of the new covenant. Do this also and remember me. And so it is that we celebrate the holy. And we do this and share this until he comes again. to look at the bulletin, not just for the many activities going on this week in our church, but for the list of our brothers and sisters that are not well and need our prayers. Are, is there anyone on your heart and mind that for praise or prayer uh, this morning? Thank you. Where is she, in fact? And we, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, we'd all like to pray, give you a praise for putting up with him. Yes. Oh my gosh, that is a praise. I know God is so good. I know Sherry has been at her side, and there have been lots of prayers for Cindy. So 
God is good, isn't he? Just so good. I'd like to, yes, yes. David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you didn't hear that, that was praise and thanksgiving for our youth leaders and youth who in their caroling touch hearts. Yes. Yes, Sherry. Thank you. We'll be praying for Brianna and putting her on our heart this morning. Neela, I'd like to give it a little update on uh, uh, Billy on Neela Ahabi. She actually had a really good week. Uh, her, some of her new medicines really worked for her. And um, it's a, one of the first times I've heard her chipper in a long time. So uh, it was a good week, and we just uh, thank God for good weeks. Oh, amen. Amen. If we can also please remember at this time of year all of our men and women in the armed forces all over the year, all over the world they are very often without family and very often without the support of that family if we can just wrap them in that prayer too let's go to god in prayer please if we can bow our heads almighty god our heavenly father we come into your presence only because of your mercy and the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for this opportunity and are humbled by the immensity of your love for us. We pray this morning for restoration and renewal, that we may be more Christ-like in your eyes and in the eyes of others whom we meet. Father God, we are so richly blessed, yet we're like many healed by Christ who rushed off in their excitement of being whole and new and failed to stop and give Christ praise and thanksgiving. Forgive us, Father, when we miss the opportunity to tell others about your son Jesus, when we forget that our redemption is a gift that cannot be earned by good works, you love all of mankind, Father, and you ask us to do the same. Instead, we pick and we choose as it suits. Forgive us when we walk, rush away with your blessings, too busy and preoccupied with our own lives to even take a moment to thank you deeply and sincerely for all that you have given us as your children. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Father God in three, let today be the day that through your Holy Spirit we ask to understand your will and your word. Let today be the day that through the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, we have the opportunity to be a lantern holding high his love for all to see. Heavenly Father, let today be the day we turn back from our selfish trek and we seek the path that leads to your mighty, forgiving, gracious, and everlasting love. Holy Father, I pray blessings on all of those here 
and those who join us through spirit and love from wherever they are today. I pray for the healing spirit of mind and body of all of those on our prayer list and those we hold in our hearts. It is through our faith that we know this prayer is answered. And we thank you for this gift of healing. As they heal, Lord, please continue to let us know how we can be comforting to them and help ease their pain. Holy Father, light of love and creation, thank you for this church. A place where we can come publicly together as brothers and sisters in Christ and say together, united in love for you, the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
children, you are dismissed at this time for children's chapel. You know, one of the announcements that didn't get made or that I didn't pay attention to or that I didn't hear was this Saturday is the pancake feast. And just for Logan, I'm looking forward to my short stack. Yeah. So today I want to see how many real good scholars we have here today. So get your, your scholar hat out and put your, your scholar hat on. <clears throat> because here's, here's the great big question just right off the bat. How long ago was it before the world began? Anyone? That question, it sets the stage for us today. How long was it before the world began? The Bible tells us that long before the world began, God had a life-giving plan to bring redemption through Christ to all of those who would choose to believe and follow. So however long... It was before the world began, before all that, before any of that, God already had a plan to save. First Peter, the first chapter, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, he was chosen before the creation of the world, before the world began. God knew we would need a Savior. God knew we would need to be set free. And by sending his one and only son, we could receive forgiveness and find new life through Christ. And now the stage is set. Throughout scriptures, weave through verse after verse in the Old Testament, are prophecies that speak of the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior, the, the one who would come and do this thing. They told you. They told us. And biblical scholars have concluded that hundreds of years before Jesus was ever born, more than 300 prophecies were recorded to tell of his coming, his birth, his journey to the cross, and pointing to the power of his resurrection. 300 of them. How many think that we should cover all 300 of them today? We're not. We're not. But all these prophecies, they point to the exact location to the exact circumstances, even to the exact timing of Christ's birth. And think, that's just crazy to me. But it's only God and God alone, the only entity who could plan those specific details and ensure that they all came to pass, and to make no mistake about it, just had them all written down. I mean, there isn't any... Well, that's not exactly what I meant in, my, in the message I left for you on the phone. Well, no, 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 that's, it's not one of those round-robin things where you have 20 people in a circle and you tell one person and then it finally comes back all around all the circle and then it's a little different. No, 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 it's all written down. Only about 300 scholars can find God said it would happen just that way, and it did. And for Christians, for Christ followers, Jesus is the fulfillment of prophetic scripture. He is the one to which everything and everyone was pointing. For he is the light of the word, he, world. he is the light. He is the way, the truth, and the light. And John 1, 4 says, and in him was life, and that life was the light of all Think of going in and out. They told you, they told us, and here it is. So believe it or not. But there it is. And this morning I want to try to have a, fun, a little fun with that, that tag, tag, tag line. Because in the middle of it, I think it might be kind of fun to either think about it or say it out loud. Because I'm going to go through ten prophecies. And they are believe it. Or not moments. So if you want to participate in that silently or out loud, I don't care. They're all going to be believe it or not moments. 
So here it is, prophecies, 10 of them that I want to speak of. They're in no certain order this morning, and I promise I can get 10 of these done in 15 minutes. First, Christ would be identified, known, filled with power, peace, and the Spirit from birth. Prophecy, Isaiah 9, 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In Isaiah 61, 1, it says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. The fulfillment, Luke 4, 18, Christ himself did that. And it says this in Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. Sound familiar? Because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free. Church, that's humanity he's talking about. That's all of humanity. That includes us. Jesus came to set you free from something you want to be no part of. And that's eternal separation from God. They told you so. So believe it or not. Number two, Christ would be born of a virgin. Most of us have heard of that one. The prophecy, Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Fulfillment, Mary received the same prophecy from the angel Gabriel. And it's there in Matthew 1, 23. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. They told you so again. Believe it or not. Three, Christ would be born in Bethlehem. Prophecy, Micah 5, 2. The Lord says, Bethlehem, you might not be an important town in the nation of Judah, but out of you will come a ruler over Israel for me. His family line goes back to the early years of your nation. It goes all the way back to the days of long ago, the fulfillment in Matthew 2, 10, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod. Magi came from the east of Jerusalem. There it goes. There it is. And there they told you, believe it or not. A star would point the way towards Christ. Imagine that, light pointing to light. Prophecy. Numbers. 24, 17. How many of you thought that Numbers was full of prophecy? 24, 17. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come forth from Jacob, and a scepter shall rise from Israel, and shall crush through the forehead of Moab, and tear down all the sons of Zeth. Fulfillment, Matthew 2, 1 and 2. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Who is he who was born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east. They saw the star of light pointing to the light and have come to worship him. They told you so. Believe it or not. I kind of like this. This is fun. The fifth one. Not near as uplifting there would be a great sorrow surrounding the time of his birth, and many children would be killed. Prophecy, Jeremiah 31, 15. A voice is heard in Ramah morning, a great weeping. Rachel reaping for her children and refusing to be comforted because her children are no more. The fulfillment, Herod's cruel scheme to kill Jesus, it just didn't work. 
However, he ordered all the babies, boys living near Bethlehem, two years old and younger, to be put to death. And we are reminded of it in Matthew 2, 16, when Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi. He was furious. And he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. They told you so. Believe it or not. Six. The timing of Christ's birth would lie and life would, would come before the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. And the prophecy is in Daniel 9, 25 and 26. How many of you thought Daniel was full of prophecy? Should have. It's got a lot in there. Now listen and understand, seven sets of seven plus 62 sets of seven will pass from the time the command is given to rebuild Jerusalem until a ruler, the anointed one, comes. Jerusalem will be rebuilt with streets and strong defenses despite the perilous times. After this period of 62 sets of seven, the anointed one will be killed, appearing to have accomplished nothing, and a ruler will arise whose armies will destroy the city and the temple. It's all just there. Every bit of it's there. The fulfillment. There are three ways that that is fulfilled. And I'm going to go to Matthew, the second chapter, the first verse, for the first one. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem. There it is, the fulfillment, the reminder of Herod. 1 Peter 2, 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness, but by his wounds you have been healed. It speaks to Jesus on the cross. And then Matthew 24. Do you see all these things, he replied? Truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be toppled. The temple will be destroyed. They told them so. They told us. Believe it or not. There would be a presentation of gifts for the baby. Prophecy. Psalm 72. How many of you thought the book of Psalms had prophecy in it? Well, it does. Psalm 72, 10 and 11. May the kings of Tarish and distant shores bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring him gifts. May all kings bow down to him and all the nations served him. Who was it that came and brought gifts? The kings, right from there. Fulfillment, Matthew 2, 11. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. And they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Why? 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 Oh, there's all kinds of stories about the value of the gold, the frankincense, and myrrh, and how it helped with the journey that would be in front of them. But what did these kings know to do? The only way they knew how to open their hearts was to open their wallets. They thought the greatest treasure that they have is something they could carry with them and open a chest up and present. This baby opened up, but not for gold, but for a heart. Open your chest up. The heart is the gift the baby desires. They told you so. Believe it or not. Eight. He would be worshipped by shepherds. Prophecy. Psalm 72, 9. Did you realize that the Psalms once again spoke and it says, May the desert tribes bow before him and his enemies 
lick the dust. I learned that as a teenager. How'd you like to be a teenage boy quoting scripture and just say, well, just lick the dust? My parents didn't think that was funny, nor did more too many other people. May the desert tribes bow before him. Who are the desert tribes? Desert tribes, their sons, who, who, who had no education, that, that had nothing, they became shepherds. Second chapter of Luke, 15th chapter of Luke. This will be a sign to you. We'll find the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in the manger. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. So they told us. They told you. Believe it or not. Nine. Christ would be called to escape to Egypt. Prophecy. Hosea 11.1 1. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. Fulfilled. Second chapter of Matthew, verse 13. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to try and kill him. They told you. Believe it or not. And then with five minutes left, the tenth. The entire lineage of Jesus would be confirmed through Scripture. Prophecy. Jesus was from the line of Abraham. And Genesis 12 shares about Isaac. Genesis 17 and 26 about Jacob. Genesis 28 about Judah. Genesis 49. Jesse and David in Isaiah 9. Jeremiah 23. Fulfillment, we see the entire fulfillment of Christ's line and his genealogy through Matthew, the first chapter, and Luke, the first chapter. This is the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Praise to be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David, Luke 1, just like they said. Time after time after time after time. Fulfillment after fulfillment. All of them. Proof after proof after proof after proof. If I was an attorney in a court of law, I used these 10 and 290 more to make my case. Over thousands of years, since the beginning, before the beginning of time, who else could have done this but God? And why did God do it? To redeem you. He loves you that much. Confirmed. God has a plan. And he told you so. Believe it or not. So there you go on this third Sunday of Advent 2019. Just a reminder. A reminder that points out Christmas was planned before the world. Begin. So what do you believe? Why do you believe it? Are your beliefs grounded in the scripture? Do you know that God told you so? For you see he planned Christmas before the world began. They told them so. They told them. Us so. And if you believe, you can't help but have a Merry Christmas. 
believe it or not. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for your word. Oh God, we thank you for the way that all throughout your word, time after time after time, book after book after book, verse after verse, in chapter after chapter, it's right, just open it and read it, and you will find out how much God loves you. Oh God, thank you for your love that we even celebrate today in the lighting of this Advent candle. Oh, we'll take hope. And we'll take peace. But oh God, love. Your love. That sent your son. Believe it. Or not. If there is one here today who has never confessed that belief, I would love to have a conversation with you about that. If there's someone here looking for a church home, please visit with me. Visit with Billy. Visit with Stephen. Visit with one of our elders. Just visit with us. We'd love for this to formally be your church home and informally can always be. Your church home. Oh God, thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for this worship. Thank you for this gathering. Thank you for these people. And thank you for this place. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let's all stand and sing together.
God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this worship. And we believe. We believe. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.